Good morning, everybody. It's um, it's 0600. It's the uh, 22nd of January 2024. And of course, 0600, we know what the O stands for. Oh my God, it's early. Right, so on the charts, we've got Euro Odd, Euro USD. Sorry, let me start again. Euro Odd, Euro NZD, GBP Odd, and GBP NZD. And uh, it's Monday morning, so we're kind of expecting the markets to be fairly quiet. Um, usually, I like to have more confidence in the markets at uh, Monday afternoon, the 1 p.m. session of the Crossfire. But this is the Crossfire session, and uh, let's get started. So, we're on the 15 minute time frame, and we're going to put the indicators on in the usual way. Look at this nice push here, though. Got a push down, push down on uh, British pound, New Zealand dollar. And that's obviously created some imbalance. It's just mitigating that imbalance right now. So let's go and put the indicators on. So we'll uh, we'll put this one on the 0600 and a couple of trend lines. Now we'll go and put these on, and then we'll go and check the news, find out what we've got. Euro ends a D. Again, similar pattern there, look, taking out the imbalance right now as we speak. 15 minute time frame. Yeah, look, see, so yeah, that's all a very similar pattern. Taking out, taking out this imbalance. This is, uh, GBP AUD and GBP NZD. If you were, if you want to know how to how to do this strategy, it is very simple and straightforward. Um, just go to the uh, go to the card at the above, and you can see the course. I did a mini course, so you can follow along with that. Okay, so let's go and look at the news. Uh, so we want um, my FX book. Excuse me. It really is six o'clock in the morning, as you can tell. Okay, so um, eight o'clock is the next next lot of news. Australian dollar, Swiss franc, Japanese yen, the euro, the GBP, CAD, NZD. Okay, and uh, this all medium impact news eight. So it may or may not affect us. It's two hours away, so we'll. Uh, if we're still on the charts, I mean, obviously I don't do these sessions more than an hour, but if we're still on the charts or we've still got things that are of interest to us, we're going to be putting some alerts on and then coming back and seeing what we've got. 10 o'clock, Euro, it's quite a lot of Euro news look, all today. Uh, Euro up until 1400. Low impact, but again, that could have some impact because there's quite a lot of it. Um, and then uh, the USD at 1500. Oh, excuse me. Ah, right, so let's go and have a look. So this is a Euro odd. Go and have a look and see what we've got in terms of imbalance. There is imbalance obviously down here, but this is currently being mitigated by this price. Um, looks like the price may well go back to the pivot. Uh, and then we can reach these equal highs here. Um, so what have we got? Imbalance there, look, just here. So let's go and take off the indicator. There we go, nice and clean. So, as I always say, put your imbalance on, okay, but do as many things as you can manually. 
massive takeaway of anything is do as many things manual. Learn your skills, get the knowledge, learn your skills, and nobody can take it away. Okay? It's imperative. Absolutely imperative when it comes to anything that you're learning. Learn it for yourself. Don't rely on indicators or bots or bloody anything. This 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 has been mitigated, that's been taken out, so we can we can get rid of that. Yeah, let's have a look here. It's very choppy. of any major interest. Have we got anything below where price is right now? So this is the lows. Oh, look at this. Lots of uh, imbalance here. Or is there? Looks like there is, but it wasn't really a little bit there, look. Well, if he sat there thinking, well, what's he doing? Why is he putting these boxes on? And how can he see it? Um, go to the course. The course will explain everything. Uh, and what I do with the imbalance, I just put the template on, and all that does, it just puts that text on. Okay. And that's just the way I like it. There we go. And this imbalance down here has been mitigated as well, so we'll take that away. Take off as much stuff as you as you need to. What have I just removed there? Oh. Yeah, take as much, off as much stuff as you need to to keep your charts clean. All this, all mitigated. And the only reason that's still there is because I haven't traded at 6 a.m. for a little while because um, I've been I've been working a bit later. Uh, okay, let's make that a bit bigger. There we go, so that's ready. Euro NZD. Uh, again that's all been that's all been mitigated. You can see where price price came down to here. Okay, so we're going to put a, a horizontal ray onto that line there. Okay, and we're looking for imbalance below this area. So let's go and have a look. There's the ray. Okay, it just keeps it a bit easier for us to look at. Nothing there. Been mitigated. Right, let's uh, let's come out of that. Just have a check on this one up here as well. Look at this imbalance here. This is this is the banks leaving money on the table. And they've left it on the table since uh, 
the 29th of November and that they will come back at some point to take that out but uh, right now it's still relevant and it's still there it's still active so we just keep it on the chart Right, uh, what are we on? 6.11. We don't want to be messing around too much. You see how price, and I said it'll go to the pivot, it's shooting past. It's created a lot of, uh, a lot of imbalance there. here as well but I don't think no right let's leave that for now right GVP NZD mitigated so it formed it earlier earlier okay and then price can, then came through when it comes through and touches it and breaks breaks through that imbalance it's gone the imbalance is gone imbalance here Six thirteen, and we've got to wait until uh, oh another minute. And we can put these lines on. And right now, we've got the essential job at six a.m. of drinking coffee, which is what I recommend to everybody. So any any lines that I've got on the chart right now that I don't need, I'm going to take off. So any points of interest, any areas of interest, any previous imbalance that's now been mitigated, take it all off and just get your chart as clean as possible. We'll take off the the forex indicator as well, our straightforward forex. Again, just so we can um, put the trend lines on and we can see everything a bit clearer. Doing that, I'll have a quick look at my uh, no forex factory. Have a look at the news in relation to that uh, news. No, sorry, calendar. about as useless as a chocolate coffee pot okay right it's now 615 I'm now going to put the charts on put the put these on the chart so this goes on here put your magnet tool on put that on the hat on on the on the candle that we need 
shift, I'm going to put that across because there's no previous higher high. Next lower low is the one next to it on this one, on this, the red trend line that comes up to there, just underneath. Put it on a two minute time frame and put the indicator back on. Make that a bit bigger and we're good. Euro NZD, the higher high. Again, same situation. Magnets all on. Put that on the 6.15 candle or the 6 o'clock candle. The lower low next to it is the is the candle next to it as it was previous. Come up, touch the wick, put the uh, forex indicator up, back on, and put it on the two minute time frame. Ready to go. GBP AUD. Six, uh, magnets all six o'clock. Put that on there. And there's no previous high high, so we're just going to put that on. Uh, horizontal. All you do is put, click your mouse, click shift, release it, done. Two minute time frame, indicators back on. And GBP and ZD, so same thing, magnets all on, onto the 6 o'clock, that's going to go horizontal, the lower low is the one next to it, and we're going to go just underneath the wick there, there we go, 2 minutes, take that off, indicator back on, make it a bit bigger so we can see it. So essentially, with this, uh, with this, with this strategy, we want to be looking at potential buys when the price goes above the green trend line, and the opposite, looking for potential sells when it goes below the red trend line. Um, so looking at this, looking at our straightforward forex indicator, again bespoke software that's been made custom made for us, and also refined over the last seven years. Um, is first of all looking for a wave so the wave up okay is telling us look for potential buys okay then we've got the PSAR okay the PSAR is green the wave obviously is green um, in terms of the moving averages they're all moving kind of upwards we've got the uh, the 5 the 13 which is yeah the 62 and the 200 all moving in the right direction and then down here we've got the Wadar Atar and this blue zone is what we call the dead zone okay this is where there's it just tells you there's not enough volume stay out um, the histogram when that's um, a darker color you got the two two shades of green the lighter color means weakness okay and then we've got the explosion line okay so what we want is the explosion line to be away from the dead zone kind of moving away and pushing away and ideally we want the histogram to be above the explosion line and what it's showing me right now is that there was a little bit of a push okay but right now there's not enough volume and you can see how the, the candle is now red um, so again we're just going to wait and we're currently where price is right now it's where we call no man's land so nothing's really happening so let's go and have a look at uh, the euro and ZD and that's all we do we just go go to the pairs have a look um, assess what's happening on it on it, each one on its own merits so no no one indicator tells you whether to get in or not out of a trade it's just a case of let's assess everything see so look at this look see it's, that's way into the dead zone hardly any any volume whatsoever um, do we say the uh, eight o'clock yeah eight o'clock is the isn't it? <coughs> so we've got, but yeah, 
it's neither above nor below and it's in the middle of these two these two trend lines so just wait okay GBP AUD is the same in terms of the indicator currently we're in a wave up okay but that's only half the story okay when you put everything together this Wadarata actually is really good because it, it's kept me out of a lot of trades previously um, if you don't if you don't know what's happened with price action when it comes to looking at the candle some people will just look at the candle and go "Ooh, look at that you know <laughs> and they'll make an opinion based on just looking at the candles and that's what you that's what you want to do you want to get to a point where you understand what the price means and you kind of understand everything but these these things and the, everything else are just additional confirmations to give you confidence you know when you when you trade looking at looking at the markets and whether you're going to get into a trade or not um, and GBP and ZD so they're all pretty much doing the same thing right now which is nothing and as a new trader if you're a new trader if you're excited about trading okay and it's definitely exciting when you first get on the charts and you realize you can make a full-time income from your box room or your bedroom or wherever okay or from your bed okay if it's, <laughs> it's gonna trade in bed you can do it from anywhere all right and you can do it an hour a day two hours a day sometimes you get on the charts and you'll make a trade in in the first five minutes and you go really and and my school told me to go and work for 50 55 years and I can do this so it's exciting but at the same time if we can remove the logic and go nothing happening there's no trades happening okay so what do we do we stay out okay and then sometimes it can be a part of you going yeah I know but I want to take a trade Just stay out there's two main things you want to be looking at when you're trading. Number one, why should I why should I stay out of a trade? What's keeping me out? And number two, protecting your account. In fact, number one, protecting your account, because number two comes as a result of that. Okay, so always protect your account and always think in terms of protection and stop losses and why should I stay out of this trade? You want you want me to go and take a trade? Convince me. Let everything line up properly. So right now we're getting a bit more of a sniff for the for the sell. Okay, the water tower has just gone slightly stronger, although we're still a way away from coming down here. Okay, so let's go and have a look at Euro A Euro odd. It's uh it's moved past that trend line and now we've got a little bit of a clear air so what you want is a gap okay that, that's ideal is to have the gap um, and that kind of tells me not doesn't tell me yet okay but it tells me that it's moving away from resistance of this trend line to po po potential support as long as that gap is is maintained okay if, it, if the price comes down like it is now okay and touches this price and look at where it is now so there look at a tiny tiny gap okay so it's not enough of a gap really to convince me that it's now support for this price action um, and also the this small small candles okay and it's so look it's come it's just is it coming through are you going to come through it looks like we're still in resistance so if we're still in resistance it's the magnet is still or the price is still attracted to this area here okay so we've had this push previously previous to 6am it looks like maybe the price is starting to consolidate a little bit euro nzd same thing we're back into in fact we haven't even gone out of the zone you can see how 
the the price has respected the trend line um, and again that should give you confidence in the in the strategy okay when price starts to respect it then you can say great okay and do some back testing get familiar with it and it's just a case of building your skills and building your confidence um, when you're doing this and repetition is key repetition will give you the confidence It'll give you that that mental muscle and that the confidence is to keep going so again we're in no man's land with this this is uh, G, G, uh, GBP AUD no change on there okay so we're starting to starting to come out of the, the red trend line and if it breaks to the lower if it breaks and we get we get a gap the next thought process is okay where could price go to okay and right now here you've got this 62 moving average okay so if it came below here from there to the 62 moving average, we've got 14 pips okay so that will that possibly would give us the right numbers to maybe get into a trade for a one to two, one to two ratio, one to two uh, risk to reward. So we don't want to be risking any any more than one percent. If you're taking a a funded account challenge, then maybe you want to do a half a percent, even less, just to protect your account. Um, but again, ideally, with with these sorts of trades or with this sort of trading, particular areas of interest. The first one is the red trend line. Okay, so you want to put your stop loss just above the red trend line. Okay, ideally up here. Okay, because that's where the the indicator has given us that line there as a potential stop loss. But then we've got to ask ourselves: Do the numbers work? So we've got to, excuse me, twenty seconds left on this time frame. So if we were to take a short on this, let's say we were to just take a short from here. Okay, so look where the line is it's 12.6 pips and if you look at this risk to reward ratio okay we want a two on there if we want to get a two on there that takes us all the way down to down to there which for me is too much so if we were to bring it down a little bit and just bring this across that's where we are now 7.6 pips to bring us around around there which is better 7 pips is I, I like about 7 pips and you got a 1 to 2 ratio it just brings us just just below this this moving average um, which uh, which isn't, isn't ideal So if, this, if that moving average was down here, for example, then that would give you more confidence, you know, in terms of the numbers working out for you, and to get into what we would potentially call a, a good trade. Okay. So what's happening now is we can see the explosion line is starting to come back to the dead zone. We've got the pink red, which is showing weakness, and we've got the. Uh, let me just take this off. We've got the candle which is kind of a doji candle, doesn't really know what it wants to do. We're in a wave down, okay. Uh, we've got a crossover here as well. So what I'd like to see, as well as the, the, the moving averages pointing in the direction of the trade, so if we're gonna go for a sell, we want this to be pointing down. And I like these to be in order as well, okay. So right now the order is wrong. So the first one is the yellow, the 13, and then the five. Okay, so I want the 5, the 13, the 62, the 200 in that order. Okay, and it's not in the order. Um, so again, I'm, I'm kind of mindful of the fact that price doesn't know what he wants to do, despite the fact that it's still below the red trend line. Okay, so um, we're just gonna we're just gonna wait. There's no rush to get in. Um, and even when this this price decides to make up its mind. You could end up, you could end up like where price is now. It's, it's like well, it's ten, eleven pips. So potentially we could look at this, but it is still quite early on. So if we shorted from here, 
go for our one to two. It's not. It's not the best of trades, um, and it's Monday morning which you want to be mindful of. A lot of people don't even bother trading on a Monday morning because because the markets are still warming up from the, after the weekend. Um, this isn't really doing much at the minute. See, sometimes you get into a trade and you go, yep, yeah, everything's lining up, it's looking positive, that's a good trade, and I can I can easily get in and do my my two percent risk reward. Just like as I always say, property developing. You know, if you go in, and if you can buy the house at the right price, you know you're confident that you're going to make some good money and some profits by the time you've you've developed that property with a contingency. Okay, and sometimes you go into a, a property and you go, oh, this is a bit tight." This, so you make an offer, and the vendor goes, "No, no, no I want more." And as a proper developer, you go, okay, that's my offer. If you, if you change your mind, uh, give me a call. And you walk away, okay? And the new, the new investor or the new developer will go, but I really want the house. I really want to be called a landlord. I really want, okay, off you go then. Go and be a landlord, okay? Go and lose your money. And this is, this is one of my situations, okay? But I really want to trade. But I really want to take the trade. It looks because it's below the trend line. But it's a rubbish one. Because this is resistance area, okay? You what your profits are here, okay? Not down here, okay? This is not a one to two ratio trade. If you get it, okay, then well done. Maybe you get that, that wonderful buyer that comes in at the end and says, oh, I really like it, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you more for it than than it's actually worth. Okay? But that's rare. Right, let's have a look through. So, Euro AUD is in no man's land. Euro NZD is in no man's land. We're still waiting for that. GBP AUD is uh, starting to tempt us with the fact that it's going past the trend line, but look at the distance between the trend line and the 62 moving average. Again, there's not enough in it. So if I do measure it, seven pips so by the time you have a look at broker spread by the way you can, if you go to your mt4 mt5 whatever you use and um, you can activate the spread and it will tell you exactly what the what your broker is going to charge you so let's say for example it's like two pips okay then that move is no more than five pips and you're just giving money away to your broker so why why bother why bother going to the expense and the frustrations and the, the stress of getting into a really bad trade just to take five pips? No. Not for me. Because you're not going to get your one to rest risk to award. Unless your stop loss is really tight, which makes it even more of a risk. So, move on. So, GPNZD. We'll take this off because this is the trade. This does put that on that for examples. Um, but if it does go down, it will resist at this area, okay? And then if it does resist the area and then breaks down, breaks down even further, then great, we've got some additional confirmations and we've got a slightly better trade in here, okay? Because the distance between this moving average at the moment and the 200, okay, is 26.5 pips. So if we're gonna look at this as a potential trade, if it did go down, we'd just look left and go, okay, where where's our previous highs, okay? And then we can put on these previous areas of interest. So you can see, look, that area of interest coincides with this area of interest coincides with this moving average, okay? So that's gonna be quite, Price, if price comes down, it's going to bounce all over that place. It's going to bounce all over this area. Okay. Uh, 
what do we say? G GVP AUD. We just have a look to my chair. There we go. One day I'm going to be drinking coffee, doing a trade, and this chair's going to collapse. Like it almost did the other week, and uh, that'll be a sight. So, if you look at this, we've got the wave down, okay? We've got the PSAR is red. Um, moving averages are in the wrong order and they're also pointing in the wrong direction as well. This green, the, the green trend line, the 60 looks like it's moving up and so does the 200. Okay, the wonder atar is weak. Um, the histogram, yeah, the histogram moved away and it moved back and it's kind of looks like it's pointing more towards the dead zone and uh, it's just telling us. No, telling us no, and now look, price has gone back to that trend line, it's touching it, so we're still in a resistance zone when it comes to this. Uh, G, G N. I'll just I'll just call them G A and G N, G N, E N, E A. That's what a lot of people do as well. Just, just uh, call them by their initials. Although you can't call me JM. So price wanted to come back down. It, it tried to push away. Okay, and now it's starting to retrace. But like I said, it's Monday morning. Don't usually bother trading too much on a Monday morning because of this. Um, but the alarm went off and I was awake. So I thought, hey, you know what? I'll treat you guys to a to a Monday morning session. Um, so Monday morning and Friday afternoon, typically you want to be, depending on what sort of trading you're doing. Okay, sometimes some people stay in the trades over the weekend and it will incur additional handover costs for your broker, as it always, you know, always does. Um, but I like to be out of my trades by Friday afternoon, and I don't usually get into trades until Monday afternoon at the latest. And the best days to trade: Tuesday through Thursday, Friday morning. And if you're trading Bitcoin, you can trade whenever. Cryptos, 24 hours a day, it's up to you. Um, but as you know, if you're gonna start trading Bitcoin or cryptos, the spreads are insanely big. So you've got to bear that in mind. So when you're trading Bitcoin, you only wanna be getting into really good trades. And you've got to know what you're doing as well, because the markets are very volatile. So. Uh, EA currently in the middle of nowhere, no man's land, nothing happening on that. EN, same, no man's land. GA, um, it's, uh, say it's, it's pushing through this trend line, and we've got a gap, which is always nice, okay, but. Uh, the distance between, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. The distance between here and the, the moving average, 3.5 pips, what you'll find is price, even though it's coming back down, okay, it's gonna find resistance at this area, and it's either gonna do two things, well, it's gonna do three things, bounce, break, or consolidate, okay, so price comes, comes down and bounces off, because this is resistance, it's the floor, okay, preventing it. Um, or it'll break through. It'll break through. Okay. 
and then become support, to become the ceiling. Okay, but uh, then we can, then we, if it goes further down and ends up down here, then again we can consider potential trades to the downside to the 200 moving average. Uh, the water data is uh, showing us that there's a bit more potential for a for a sell. Dead zone is starting to move away, or the, the explosion line is starting to move away from the dead zone, and the histogram is showing us there's a bit more strength on there. So we'll let that do its thing for now. Uh, let's see what it's got. Distance from here, from the from that price is eight point six, and the distance from the moving average. I think they did this a while ago. Twenty six, twenty six pips with a little bit of imbalance here. Or is there? There's no imbalance there. I don't even I don't know what that is. Turn it off. There is imbalance here, look. But we're on the two minute time frame, so we'll just leave. Just leave that for now. So the euro pairs are just doing nothing. They're just in consolidation. There was a big move up. Okay, so the 15 minutes on from big move up. Okay, from 1 15, 2 o'clock, big move. Okay, um, and now it's just going sideways. So the, the move here from this area to where we are now at 77 pips. It's a big old move. Okay. And now, sideways rotation. But we have hit, we have hit this pivot, okay? Which is, which is always good. So we've, we've hit the main pivot of the day, okay? And I always like to see, if we're, if we're trading pivots, I always like to see the first pivot activated so price goes through it, okay? And then it's come up to R1 okay potentially we could see price over the day come back down to the pivot again but for the purposes of uh, what we're doing we're in sideways rotation uh, I've got my job. There we go. so it's two minute time frame it's starting to it's starting to give us some interest for the sell but at the same time even if it does come past our trend line and form a new a new uh, a new candle with a gap we still got a short distance away to this moving average very short the pip between there is 14 so if price comes past and then comes past the, the, the 62 moving average, then we might be interested in, in maybe taking a trend or, the, or a trade all the way down if price action is such that uh, that lends itself to it. But right now, you can see, look, it bounced. And the two things it will do bounce or break or go sideways. Currently, it's bouncing. That may change. Let's keep, a, keep an eye on that. No man's land. Uh, right here we go so price is currently resisting because it's it's dragging its feet it's still touching that moving average but there is still possibly what we're on now we've got the we've got 
16 seconds left so let's say if we short at this position wouldn't get in yet okay and at the top of the trend line okay 8.7 pips can we comfortably make our yes we can there we go so we're comfortably more are we comfortable are we comfortable 8.3 pips to there 10 pips to there I mean if we did that if, if we did our stop loss here at the top of this engulfing candle we've still got room we've got breathing room for the next for the 200 moving average so this this is where you've gone into a house I know I keep talking about property developing but you know you go into a house and you go okay yeah there's room to move here there's room to profit and we've got a bit of a contingency um, but again what is what would be keeping me out of this is the fact that it's Monday morning. But when you enter in a trade, you want to be looking at where's the next potential reversal point. Okay. And if we go left, okay, we can see price came to here, okay, and then it came to there. So we've got these equal equal sort of lower highs here okay then it forms the highers up here this is the higher high okay so if we look at that okay so you've got all these touches all these taps all these taps if price does come down it's going to find a little bit of resistance there okay uh, currently where price is right now okay this is this little cluster it's not huge okay but it's still something to be mindful of um, when you're doing some trading um, and then if we come down a bit further what have we got we've got this this area here okay so you can just just have a quick look at that so we've got a tap there a little bit of movement there Nothing too, it's not really major to be quite honest. Um, so, you know, have we got a clear run? Yeah, we're not too bad actually. It's not too bad for this for this trade. So, are we in a good trade or a bad trade? Or an average one? Okay, this is a, a slightly more encouraging trade than what we just looked at. Um, but again, it's uh, it's Monday morning, so you've got to you've got to bear that in mind. And also the Wada. The histogram is below the explosion line, but the explosion line is moving away from the dead zone. Okay, but it is giving us a bit of a weakness, a weakness signal. But we don't need the water outside to show us weakness because we've got this doji candle and the fact that the the candle now has gone uh, gone green. Okay, tells us all we need to know. But again, these are additional confirmations. So this is something that you want to be looking at. A lot of people look at the look at the, the the indicators in one dimension and what I mean by that is they go okay it's gone red it's gone dark red let's get in okay but rather than what you want to be doing is like a three-dimensional okay why has it gone red what's the relationships what's happening you know what's the interaction between the pairs what's the interaction between the news find everything out go forwards and backwards and, and really understand the whole relationship of price and price action and why why is why is price doing that okay and the more you can do that and the more you understand what's going on and rely less on indicators you are going to become a competent and a proficient trader for the rest of your life if if suddenly you 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 fire up trading view and none of your indicators are available to you for whatever reason could you still trade you know, if your automated AI bot suddenly got turned off, would you still be able to trade? You know, and, and that's what you want to be doing. So you, you don't want to be reliant on on just flashing lights and pretty lines on a chart to help you make money. Okay, 
You know, again, if you're the developer, if your plumber don't turn up, if your plasterer doesn't turn up, can you still do it? Okay, or have you got to wait six months for the next plasterer because everyone's busy? Do it yourself. Okay, and if you can do that, then you've got your assurances, you've got your backup, and uh, you've got your you've got your security. GN, uh, like I said, look, see how it's resisted on this moving average because that is a, an area of uh, of resistance. So it's come down, it's hit the it's hit the floor, it's gone. Mm, no, bounced off, hit the floor. No, bounced off, hit the floor, bounced off. And that's where we are. So what we're waiting for now is for price to come down, if it will, to break through the 62 moving average and then find its way down to the 200. And the price of the pips that we've got, we can measure this and go, yeah, if it does do that, then look at that. Are we going to get a one to two ratio from there? Yeah, probably quite easily. And then we've got lots of areas sort of, I mean, you wouldn't put your stop loss there, but you've got potential here for a stop loss. It's a little bit tight and here as well. And these lines are what our straightforward Forex indicator are given us as potential stop loss areas. But again, don't rely on the indicator to tell you what to do. Rely on your own savvy. And the way you develop your own savvy is by doing a load of back testing. That is your assurance. That is your your that is your guarantor. Your guarantor is your experience. And if you can get the knowledge and develop that knowledge by developing skills, they're the two things you need. First and foremost before you do anything. Forget about taking profits, forget about making money. Okay. It's all about developing those skills first. Remember that. So it's doing the same thing. It's finding resistance at this 62 moving average. And now look, it, it came down, had a little sniff, okay, and it went, nah, I'm off back. Okay, and now it's bounced off. So even though here, okay, we're going, look, but it's below the red trend line, John. We should be getting in now. No, because this is an area of resistance. Okay, and we wait until it breaks breaks past just like I said with the previous pair right EN what's that doing still still wandering around like a naughty kid climbing trees when it should be should be doing something else middle of nowhere no man's land we just wait might find that price might come up here and again what have we got here what a trend line area of resistance it can do the same as it did here just resist okay resist it's trying it's trying to come through and it bounced off then it went no I'm gonna have a look and it kind of almost got and it came back down again so that's we're just waiting right GA yeah it's it's looking it's in, it's the right side of uh, the the green trend line for it to sell okay but again this is not it's not a great trade um, it's slightly better in terms of the of the uh, of the numbers okay because we've got that little bit of breathing room uh, because our, our take profit is here and, and price when it comes down you know when the markets get going and a lot of people even on a one even on a on a 6 a.m. trade, a lot of people don't even bother getting in until about eight o'clock, for obvious reasons, because um, that's when the the markets open, the the, the exchanges open, London opens. Um, but yeah, look, so price is resisting on the on the 62 moving average. So the 60 moving average for this price action is is offering support, because look, it's come up, it hit it, it came back down again, it came back up. All right, okay, just, just pretend. Okay, so see up that price action there, it came up and it hit it, and it's currently going back down. So I've got 22 seconds left on this time frame, and what I would like to see 
I would like to see price come in down, okay, as it is now, okay, and then break a little bit lower, okay, which would be nice. Doesn't mean it's going to come down and get into our profits, but so we go one second left, new uh, new candle, and it always it's always the always the way where you get a new candle, and you know typically it'd be the wrong colour. <laughs> Okay, GN. GN hasn't uh, hasn't come past the uh, the moving average. It's still uh, it's still hovering in this area here. Okay, and uh, what's happened right now is we've got the wave down. Okay, but now because of where, what's happened to price, price has come up. It's touched a red piece out and that slipped to green. Okay. So again, it's kind of like a a vote for the for the buyers, okay, which is not good. And also look at the look at the Wada Ata, okay. The histogram has gone to almost hardly any volume. And the the explosion line, okay, that's coming back into the dead zone, okay. So everything right now is just telling us there's no real volume at the moment. Right, EA. Again, that's that's showing us the same, same kind of picture, okay, as the the uh, GNZD. Almost the same look. Hovering around this. Oh, there we go. Look, starting to have a have a try. So sellers are going. No, I want to go for the sell. Okay, so it's pushing through. Seven six seconds left. On this time frame, are we going to see a, a clear break, or we're we going to see a, a possible attempt with a very small gap, tiny, tiny gap? But the gap is no, see, it's, there's no gap now. See, it's come back. So we're still resistant. So yeah, what we're looking for is looking for price to come down and create a nice gap, okay, from the, the moving average. Onto the new candle, and then we'll maybe see price come down, but not yet. So this this moving average is still resistance. Right, let's uh, scroll through them. You, uh, we're, on, we're on your odd at the minute. Okay, still waiting for that to do its thing. <laughs> You're in New Zealand doing it just in the middle of nowhere. No man's land is. It's going to be in no man's land forever, I think. So, again, nothing on that. Um, so, we've got uh, GA. Okay, it's, uh, it's encouraging. Okay, so it did actually go up, look. See there, it did go up and it did touch that moving average, but we're starting to, we are starting to continue that 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 run down. Um, and as you can see, what's going to happen now is that the next area of interest is approaching. Okay, and we may we may see a bit of resistance where our area of interest is here. It's just our manual pivot that we put on. So currently, from where we entered this, if we did, what well, we had six pips. So it'll just be interesting to see how price reacts to our manual pivot. And see how it's just reacted to it just above, okay. Oh, maybe not. So 
That's why it's so important when you're looking at trading to analyze what's happened previously. So what? So you want to go and see what's going to happen in the future. If you want to go and predict what's going to happen in the future, okay, go and see what happened previously. And that will give you pretty much a lot of the information to, to analyze things in the right way. So again, that's it, let's go left, okay. So we put these, now nah, you see what we did? That's what we did, look. We put that on the, we put that on the wick. Okay, so what it does, if you put it on the wick rather than the body, okay, when, you, when you're going for the cell, okay, it just gives you a, a bit more, it just takes away the optimism. Some people would say, oh no, it comes down to the body, okay. What you don't want to be doing, you don't want to be too optimistic. So ideally, yeah, you see where, see where the, the top of the wicks is there? Just there, okay. Maybe a little bit higher. Maybe around there, so you've got a tap, tap there. Okay, tap here. So that, that I think is where price went to. Yeah, look. See that? So it went to there. There. Okay. So again, putting on, putting on your areas, and now it's gone. That's it. That's probably about. That's probably about as far as we'll get. We came down to our area of interest, which really could well have been. Uh, our lot for this that's it and that this is why we don't bother trading Monday mornings yeah we could have we could have gone down to there that would have been like 18 pips um, but do you want to be getting to a trade and then being twitchy about it okay do you want to be getting to a trade going go on go on go on go on okay or do you want to be getting to a trade going yeah that's gonna be a good trade it's gonna come down to this area here and we can walk away Confident that we've taken a really good trade. Okay, so there was there was the numbers in this, but you know Monday morning. Look at the look at the way the the volume's gone up and then down, and now it's it's in the dead zone. So GN GN tried to come down. It wanted to push past the moving average, and it went mm, now. Nah. I'm off. I'm off here. Thanks. Okay, and it's it's starting to to retrace, push back. Right, we've been on an hour. Mm. That's just done its thing very very suddenly. Okay, seven o'clock. Let's just have a quick look at this. So you see price pushing above, okay? And then if we go, okay, well price might want to come through here and get up through here, then our next area of interest is obviously this this area here, okay? If it then continues to go up, then further up north we've got this imbalance, okay? And then we want to be looking at, okay, maybe price wants to go up. And we always know the bottom of the imbalance is a resistance area. So it can price can be attracted, if we get past this area here, and past that area, it can be attracted to the bottom of imbalance. And then depending on price action, we can say, okay, it's gonna take out the imbalance. Um, but you watch this price struggle at this area here. It'll go to there and it'll, it'll uh, bounce or break. The hurdle it's got to get over right now is this this trend line, which is in resistance. So if uh, Euro odd has done that, what's Euro and ZD done? Yeah, same thing. And now it's on its way to take out this imbalance. Okay, so. This is slightly better, okay, 20 odd pips there, 
what have we got left? Okay, so there's a, a previous high. Okay, and that's where price is, is kind of struggling right now. Again, play the waiting game. Play the waiting game and see what's going to happen at this area here. But uh, like I said, 7 o'clock. Same thing, look. See, it's offering resistance at that area. So we've got the green piece art, and just look at the distance between the piece art and the body. That gives us an, a, a bit of an indication that there's some more volume in the market. Um, we've got the, the histogram, which is above the explosion. It's uh, showing us weakness now, okay? But then that's because we've got this little little uh, indecision candle. What wave are we in? We're going to wave up, piece our flip. We've got the uh, the five, the thirteen, sixty two. Where's the uh, two hundred? Two hundred's there, and they're all pointing up. Okay, so you know it's telling us that price wants to go up, or price has gone up. But here is a resistance area. Here is a resistance area. Okay, and then when it breaks past that, then maybe we'll have a bit of clear air. To go up to the up to the uh, up to this area of imbalance. But not yet. So what we'll do? What you can do? You can go and put a a parallel channel on there. Okay. Set the alert, and so you can put your parallel channel up here. Okay. So when price goes above this area, um, then we it'll it'll set the alert on trading view. And it'll come through to your phone, and you can uh, you can take the or come back and analyze the trade as you wish. Same thing there. Look. This might be looking a bit more encouraging. We've got a minute and thirty-two left on this time frame. The blue lines that area of interest, that previous high. Okay, which is going to be resistance, and if it breaks through from there, okay, then potentially it could go and take out the imbalance. But we've got so we've got a nice we've got a nice run to there. If we look at the fifteen minute time frame, so there's our previous previous high that we looked at, or thereabouts. A long way. So look at the uh, look at the hourly. And that imbalance is from yeah twenty eighth of November. We looked at that previously, didn't we? Uh, what are we doing? Two minutes. Still needs to break through this, and um, we're currently on the pivot as well. So pretty much this area, okay, is resistance. So lots to look at. Okay, GA, what's that doing? That's going back up to the upside, but it's still not doing really much for us. I mean, we've got where's our uh, there's our green trend line. So even if we are going to consider the buy, it's got miles to go yet. Yeah. Okay. And the same with uh, GN. Is 
Let's come back down. And that's pretty much doing the same thing as well. Coming back down, offering resistance on the green trend line. It may well break through and go back into no man's land, or it could go past here. So we're looking for price to move in, in a direction that we want it to go in. Okay, and ideally, if it came up here, then we go for the buy. But look, it's still it's still resisting this uh, this green trend line. It tried to break away, but it couldn't quite get away because there's there's too much there's too much resistance here. So right, we're on an hour, been an hour and ten minutes. So if you're still watching, I really appreciate you watching, and I appreciate the fact that you know I'm not always uh, on my best at uh, 0600, but it's always good to get some extra extra training and find out what happens on the different on the different uh, times. Yeah, but Monday mornings always uh, it's always. It's always not the best opportunity to get into trades. So we're going to call it a day from there. Um, set your alerts if you need to. Um, keep your charts open because uh, things can sometimes come alive at 8 o'clock. And as you know, 8 o'clock is when we've got some news, medium impact news. Um, so we could see some more volatility. And we'll just see the markets warm up. And uh, join me at 1 o'clock when I'll be doing the crossfire session at 1 p.m. Anyway, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button just down there. Really appreciate that. And if you got some value from this, give us a thumbs up. Um, I don't know what you call value. The thing is with trading, it's a bit like playing golf. You know, sometimes you can have a good day and sometimes you can have a really bad day. But, um, you know, if you stay out of trades and you protect your account, it's a good day. Okay, if you protect your account and you do your 2%, it's, it's still a good day. Okay, so every day is a good day when you're learning and you're protecting your account. I'll see you at one o'clock. Bye for now.